football and home of high expectations in year three of the Jimbo Fisher era. It's the Aggies playing host to the Vanderbilt Commodores. Mike Morgan with just different than in his senior year. On first down, Mon rifles it complete at the 39. Breaking one tackle and racing down the sideline, trucking defenders inside the 40. And finally brought down is Anias Smith. What a catch and run by the sophomore out of Sugarland, Texas. Yeah, what you like as a quarterback and as a coach is that he catches the ball, gets right up the field. There's no wasted movement. It's a you hit it vertically, and then I'm going to get just physical with everybody and then you love that at the end Commodores four man front on second and ten Mon little pitch play to the near side past the 20 inside the 10 lunging for the end zone touchdown Anias Smith what a run I thought earlier Vanderbilt was going to go to it when they were down in the red zone against Texas A&M on their initial drive well it's A&M that comes back with the option. Nice quick decision by Kellen Mon. And then the rest. Smith just showing his athletic ability, getting him into the end zone. Snap is good. Hold is true. And it will hook left. Plenty of distance. Just started hooking on him. Continuing to spread it around. Mond out of the shotgun with time over the middle complete that's chase lane with his second catch young man out of houston texas has really come on from a hamstring injury that he suffered early in camp but this is the receiver that kellen Mon loss of a couple on the play second and 12. five in the pattern for mon goes underneath completes it to his big tight end weidermeyer and weidermeyer all six five two sixty five of them bangs his way to a couple of extras on his own third and two vandy's been good on third down tonight but not this time stonewalled at the line of scrimmage i thought seals should have kept that one Mike, they get the ball first and they can fix things in a hurry and that might help improve their first half stats first half bond out of the shotgun Feeds the tail back, cutting back. This is Spiller. Spiller weaving his way through traffic in the open field. Spiller with one man to beat. Down the 40, past the 30, and inside the 20 yard line. Finally knocked out of bounds by Maxwell Worship. Well, you go to guys that have made plays for you. A fantastic job by the offensive line. A little zone blocking, and it allows Spiller the cutback lanes. And then it's just all Isaiah Spiller in the open field. Power speed. Now second down at nine. Mon gets out of traffic. Tosses underneath at the 10. Five. Touchdown. Caleb Chapman. Well, you go all the way back to the open, and we talked about Kellen Mond being able to make plays off schedule. He gets flushed from the pocket. Nice job by Chapman of just finding an area. Of Five. The drive continues for the Commodores under 10 minutes to play third quarter. Seals. Intercepted. First mistake of the game for Ken Seals. Damani Richardson was there, and I'm not sure where Ken Seals or what Ken Seals was hoping to find them. I'm on third down. This is third and seven. Mon out of the gun. Completes it at the 13. Nifty move by Preston, who will find first down yardage and then some. Jalen Preston. Right, this is a guy. Of course, the game going on simultaneous to ours. South Carolina, Tennessee. Mon over the middle. Completes. One of his best passes of the night as he missiles that one to Cam Brown. What a big catch earlier in the first half, but this is just a slant, and he let he allows it to get into the second window. You can hit a receiver right out of his break in the first one. Or... Spiller takes it left side, breaks a tackle at the 40, inside the 30, and tripped up at the 15-yard line. Finally brought down by Randall Haney. 
Boy, second and one. It's Spiller time. Nice job up front by the Aggie offensive line. And hey, he's shaking tacklers. And a nice job in terms of his. Seth Small, the junior. And he is true on this one. Now the Aggies settle for three and lead it by five. A lot to like about this Aggies defense. Third and six. High throw reeled in, but short of the first down on the reception by Marlon. Isaiah Spiller seven yards away from 100. And this time, it's going to be Anaya Smith on the carry. Boy, does he got some wiggle in his game. Made that switch from wide receiver right before the Texas Bowl last year. And keeping it on the ground. This time, it's Spiller breaking free. Over 100 yards on the night. And down to the 41-yard line in plus territory. Tripped up by Jerkins. Well, I tell you what. what a an excellent Jay's just a smooth runner smooth and powerful nice cut there Commodores in the red zone with time seals now no time brought down that's when you got to be coached up to the point of hey get rid of it you get to the top of your drop the way come back on third down first AM sack of the night Third and 17 over the middle. Tipped over the air and accepted. Picked off by Leon O'Neill. O'Neill knocked out of bounds near uh, the 40, 15. and that might be a late flag. It is indeed a frustration penalty on Vanderbilt, and now tempers flaring on the sideline. Chris Pierce took an extra shot. And that'll help the Aggies get some more people tuning in right now that never would have thought this would be a one possession game in the fourth quarter. Third and 11, and the Aggies get a sack. No answer for Michael Clemens, the junior college transfer. They have raved about the fall camp that Michael Clemens has had. Consider one of the best jun junior college pass rushers coming out a couple of years ago Oops. did tonight down in baton rouge or today rather down in baton rouge bond on third and five and wide open in the flat is preston and he'll lunge forward for some extra yardage but move the chains for the aggies and clock will stop i don't think many people thought this would be a five-point game aggies are going to win it but they are going to escape in a lot of ways Derek mason still fired up the Commodores, a valiant effort on the road against a top 10 team, but Texas A&M really picked it up offensively, Andre, in the second half. Yeah, they did. I mean, you, you got Spiller going, Anaya Smith made some plays, Kellen Mond through the air, he made you know, some plays with, Je with uh, Jalen Preston, uh, Caleb Chapman may be the go-to receiver at 6'5", 195, certainly down in the red zone. And then you had Cam Brown step up. So some young players starting to surround their veteran quarterback in Kellen Mond. First of all, congratulations. You found a way and you got it out. Don't let everybody tell you. There's no just thing as a, a bad win. We didn't play well. Now defense made the second half. Did some outstanding things and big drives. Got some crew turnovers. Giving up too many third downs. Giving up too many push yards on some things, to lose the field position, offensively moving the football, and then three critical turnovers to put the game away. Three critical turnovers to put the game away, guys. And we had, but you gutted it out. You found a way to win. There's something to that, guys. There is something to that. But all right, well, what are we talk about? Consistency and performance. And that's what we're lacking. You got to lock in. You got to practice that way. You got to play it. Drop ball, miss block. Everybody took a turn. Defense, we did some, but we found a way to make the plays at the end of the game to do what you had to do. Something to that. Again, your competitive nature, your mental toughness, I like. Well, we got to get to execution. We got to find out who we are and what we are. If we play what we're capable of playing, compare like we've compared, do what we do, just like anybody in America. But you got to make plays. You got to do what you're going to do. You got to do it, guys. You got to do it, okay? And uh, we got to get better. I got to coach you better. It's not your fault. It's my fault. I take it. I'm, I'm in charge of that. I take responsibility. You gotta make sure you're there. But don't be down, guys. You enjoy your win. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not disappointed. I'm just saying, all you gotta do is refocus. You gotta look at the fundamentals. Why? Here's the key. Why did your plays not make that you had chances to make? That's what you gotta look at. Why were they not there? What was happening? Then you make the plays. Okay. 
we got to get better. But, hey, I love the leadership, the toughness. Did some great things out there, D. Make some stands at the end of that game, boy. Did some great things in there. We won a game. See you know what that means? I get to be in a bad mood all week. I get to push y'all all week. And we won a game and get to be in a bad mood. So I can push you, okay? All right, we got to, man. It's about getting better right here. Let's go achieve our goals, everything in front of us. But we got work. You got to, hey, dig in and work. We got work to do. We got a lot of work to do right here, man. All right? Everybody agree with that? Yes, sir. All right, great win. That's okay. Congratulations. Yeah. Come on, get in here. Hey, new opportunity next week, bro. Exactly. Let's get it. Here we go. Hey, brothers on three, one, two, three. Bro. He gets another chance at it today from Brian Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. It's the Home Depot SEC on CBS. And it is indeed the Aggies of Texas AM, number 13 in the country against the second ranked Crimson Tide of Alabama. About 20,000 here in Bryant-Denny Stadium. Normally, they'd be a little over 100. Gorgeous day for football, and we welcome you to Tuscaloosa, everybody. Uh, the first snap offensively for the Aggies. Play fake, quick slant. Quick completion. And a first down to pick up a 14 to Jalen Preston. Uh, how pretty was that? Right in his face. Again, a little hesitation on that throw, but he tucked it in there somehow. How did he get that in there? I don't know, but he got it to Cam Brown. He was supposed to play, and in that case, a perfect play to knock that ball down. Second down and 10. Here's an Ian Smith, and he got to the edge, and he is quick to the 21. And a first down. Wow. Well then, offensive line. This time, Jared Hocker. Two passes. There he got the first down at the 47. So back in Alabama territory for the Aggies. Mon quick throw. Got it out in space. To the aforementioned Anaya Smith. And he's still running, but he stepped out of bounds. But he did get the first down. I don't know if he did step out of bounds. Well, maybe he didn't. I don't think he did. The team's going down to celebrate. I thought he stepped out. I don't think so. I think Alabama thought he did, but I don't think the official called him out. The sideline official never called him out of bounds. Now, replay might, but the official didn't. Left foot. Not out there. Right foot. Tiptoe. Oh, my goodness. And he's got to be kidding in. me. How about that? Well, I'd like to have that play back, but good job, Anias. <laughs> Well, it looked like his momentum and the shove would force him out. But finally, we talked about the little things a &M hasn't been doing, and we talked about how they no were. No flag. Alabama should have moved and got the free five yards. They were too nice there. You're supposed to come out of your stance and get the declared penalty. Mac Jones had that one batted in the air. It's intercepted by a &M. And this might be a pick six. All the way down to the 15-yard line. Najee Harris saved a touchdown. So remember, it could have been offsides. Adams in the neutral zone. Alabama does not react. And then all of a sudden, batted down, intercepted, and Ness said, and I thought he might go all the way, but right side of your screen, Najee Harris runs him down to save a touchdown. The Marvin Leal and a huge play by the Aggies to have an opportunity here to tie the game. I'm guessing that he has not run that far in a long time. First mistake, basically, of the ball game, and it's a big one. And it was a forced mistake. It wasn't just a self-inflicted wound. You got to give AM credit on that one. So they set up shot for the Alabama Red Zone at the 17-yard line. Empty backfield. Kellen Mond looks right, goes over the middle. Touchdown, Aggies! How nice was that? What a great design play. Ryan Rennick, the tight end for the touchdown. They fake the wide receiver screen. Give that one to that coaching staff for a and It was looking bleak. They're down 14 nothing. All of a sudden, a third down pass, a turnover, and look at the score. Keep playing. Last year, I thought they fought hard when they were way down, and this well-designed play and perfect throw gets this game all time. Coming out of the option to Smith. 
Got to the edge. Got the first down. Bumped out at the 43. So two big calls. Uh, that's why a &M was saying, boy, we like our old schedule. We could play four or five games. And this one's complete inside the 25. And going the other way is Weidermeyer. Uh, he's got the first down. Yeah, I think they're going to give him pretty close to the 25. Field goal making your team feel good about themselves right now. In the third quarter, I'd kick the field goal. Uh, Seth Small's got this one from 30. Up and good. That was a good hold on that play. I thought the snap was a little low. So 30-yard field and 17. Vaughn fires across the middle. What a throw. And Chase Lane's got a first down. Taylor Kellen Vaughn, he, he has a lot. The conversations are pretty eye-opening. We saw that all start a year ago. And what a great cause. Kellen Vaughn wide open. Zaniah Smith trying to split the final two guys. They're going to bring it down now at the 32-yard line. But a big play down the middle. Had to know that that was the game plan going in. We opened with that. Can the running backs, can Anaya Smith put some pressure on this defense? Because from the running back spot, he can kind of get lost out there. They had their opportunities. They just weren't able. Third and six. Nice, nice throw. Nice throw. He's pretty efficient. You wonder if they had the team around him. Kellen Mond, empty backfield. Throws to the corner. Man's there, and he's got it. Touchdown, and it's Anaya Smith. So Smith did a big chunk of it. A 43-yarder to get him down there, and Kellen Mond hangs in and gets the touchdown pass of 14 yards. This is all to feel good, getting on that airplane, that we finish the game, and we're ready for Florida. We're looking at ourselves. We threw for under 300. We've established another guy. Can you cover this guy all over the field? Because he's a tough cover. They've taken basically a wide receiver and put him into that Clyde Edwards-Alaire spot. Yep. He doesn't run the ball like Clyde Edwards. Yeah, 224 certainly isn't going to move Alabama off the number two spot in the country as far as the rankings. And for 20 straight times, an assistant coach falls to the man. <laughs> We well, have to understand how important every play is. You played your hearts out. You never quit in that game. You kept playing your ass off. They made plays. They did things. But what you guys don't understand that we got to continue to put across, every play, every call, when you get in these good games, when you're right in the middle of the game, I mean, every detail of everything you do, the difference for the guys in these leagues that really win it's not talent, guys. It's execution and the ability to do it over and over and over and do it when it matters, no matter what the situation of the game. Listen, you guys battled, got back. We're down 14 nothing. Battled back, got in it, had a chance, had the ball. And if we score right there before half, don't give them the ball. It's 28-21, 28-28. You're back in the game. Understanding how you got to maximize those, those opportunities can't slip through your fingers. And defensively, learn to make the adjustments and make stops and things you go. Listen, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with what we're doing. What the difference is is how often we execute it consistently with the right frame of mind and the right intensity over and over and over. We can still have a hell of a football year. And all matters is next week. And there was a lot of good things. But there's too many things that shouldn't happen to put us behind the eight ball. Self-inflicted wounds. You understand what I'm saying? And it comes from how you practice, from everything you do. You've got to create that habit each day that every play it's for a championship, do I say. Until you get there, it can't. Until you practice like that, it won't ever translate to the field. But there's a lot of things we got to fix and look at. But there's a lot of potential here. But there's a hell of a lot of good things that happen. But we got to be self-critical of ourselves, not point fingers. Just point out what has to get fixed and have the urgency, the intensity, the focus. And listen, older guys keep playing. Younger guys, you're going to develop into it. If you ain't playing as much as you want to right now, you're going to. Just keep... Don't be that guy that hangs your head. Be part of the solution, not part of the problem or part of the, part of the issues. It'll happen. All of a sudden, what's going to happen, your opportunity is going to come. If you do that, you're not going to be ready for it. There's a lot of good players in this room. There's a lot of character in this room. But we got to get it out of you, and we got to get it playing on that field so we can do what we got to do. All right? We had our opportunities. We got to capitalize on them, and you can't let them slip through your fingers and learn to put pressure back on them. But we got to correct ourselves, guys. There's a lot of little things 
And you guys, some of you guys ain't played it yet a lot. You get out there in the game and how every play matters, get, and how fast it goes, and how quick it goes, the intensity of it. And you got to practice like that, or you ain't going to play like that. All right? Can we get those things fixed? Yes, sir. Can we get those things fixed? Yes, sir. The fourth ranked team in the country visits Bryan College Station to face number 21, Texas A&M. As we welcome you to the SEC on ESPN, about 30,000 fans expected today in Kyle Field. To beat a team like Florida, we got to have big plays. Kellen has to be more sharp. He's facing pressure here and delivers a strike. They've got a pretty good tight end as well. Jalen Weidermeyer, that's his 11th catch of the season, and he moves the chains on a out of the pistol here on first down at the 39-yard line. Play fake for Mott. And taking a shot here inside the 20. It's caught. They get one of those big plays. Caleb Chapman with single coverage pulls it in for 48 yards. They've been waiting for that all year from Mond, and he finally delivers. Look at the safeties here who are just going to run, which allows the post over the top. Look how hard these safeties collapse on the play action fake, which gives you one on one on the outside to Chapman. And a beautiful throw. We talked about the Smith big at running back. That's the two best pass catching options at this point on the same side of the field. So I would imagine Mon's eyes start there. Mon zips a pass to the end zone for the touchdown. Chase Lane was wide open. What a response by Mon to the Aggies. did right there. Kellen Mond, 7 of 8, over 100 yards and a touchdown. Facing pressure here, but gets rid of the pass. And wide open is Smith in Florida territory. Anaya Smith able to find an open seam in the secondary, and it's a 30-yard gain. They go empty, flexing Anaya Smith out top of your screen. Mond looking the other way, and has Chapman inside the 10. First down. Caleb Chapman had five catches all year coming into this game. He has four in the first half on six targets. On third and goal, Mon looks. Chapman got another one. Touchdown. Caleb Chapman has become the favorite target today of Kellen Mon. Haven't had a stop on third down yet. Another run play, and Spiller has got room across midfield. Out of bounds at the 43-yard line. A 17-yard run for Isaiah Spiller. Came in averaging eight yards a pop. Them calling the defense. And here they come. It's picked up. Mon's pass is caught. That was a great grab at the 30-yard line by Chase Lane to pick up the first down. And you could easily send it out there if you didn't. Two and, out out. and Seth Small knocks it through to end the first half, but kind of ugly clock management. Don't know again if that's on the players or the coaching staff there, but poor use of the timeouts. They do get three. 21-17, number four Florida leading at 21st ranked Texas. Fireworks here in the first 30 minutes. Caleb Chapman had 80 receiving yards and six catches and a touchdown. Wide open out of the backfield to Spiller. And Florida's defensive issues continue. All the way to the 43 for 18 yards. Let's check with Holly Rowe. 18 yard line. Out of the pistol. Odd will hand it off to Spiller. Ton of room off the left edge. Out past the 25. So a game of 13 on the play. Tomorrow. Nine minutes to play here in the third. Tenth carry of the day for Spiller. And again, a ton of running room as he runs over a defender. Man, we've seen that twice out of Isaiah Spiller. Gate of 23. How about this right side of the offensive line? I mean, we're talking about just an absolute gash. And these guys on the right side between Carson Green, South of Carroll's own, by the way, and Jared Hawker have done a fantastic job of moving some of these Florida Gators off the spot. South of Carroll. Come on, Dragons. Here he is again, getting the perimeter. Past the 40. Boy, he is not afraid. Look at him lower the shoulder and a big hitter in Sean Davis. Isaiah Spiller taking names here. Tested here as the game goes along. Just going to keep pounding it here. This is Smith. And he's got a first down to the 24-yard line. 
At over 100 yards week one against Vandy. Play fake, first pass of the drive. Mon dumps it off, wide open, Weiermeyer to the five. Comes up a yard short of the line to gain, but they're inside the Florida five-yard line. Challenge that big group up front. The Aggies. And they will pound it, first down, touchdown, Isaiah Spiller. <laughs> like five million. Trask pumps in trouble, and down he goes. They finally get to him. Bobby Brown was there, so was Tyree Johnson. The third down and five here for Kellen Mond. Two touchdowns on the day. Pressure coming. Blitz has picked up the pass. One-handed catch. Weidermeyer stabbed it. And that was a bullet from the quarterback in Weidermeyer. With a beautiful grab. Well, let's take a better look at that from the AT&T Skycam. Someone check his gloves. Is there some Velcro on those gloves? My goodness. And Kagan Baldry in here. With Spiller on fourth and two. Spiller cuts it back. Has a first down. And more. He's got a touchdown. And the lead for Adam. Special. 140 rushing yards and two touchdowns for Isaiah Spiller. Let's take a look at that touchdown from the AT&T 5G Skycam. I just love this little wrap concept. It's a little bend concept. See Spiller on fourth and short trying to run to the right side of the offensive line, and then he follows those reversers back around to the left to create some leverage there on the edges of the defense. That's a really nice... On his 25-yard line, going to hand it off. Spiller breaks a tackle at the 30, but stumbles. Still got seven yards on the against the top five ranked team. On to the air again. In traffic. Catch made by Chapman at the 49 for a first down. That was an excellent throw. Plenty of time here for AM, and plus that Florida defense got to be tired as often has been on the field here in the second half. My goodness, pinpoint accuracy between several defenders. here for Mon moving to his right looking deep got a receiver it's caught Chapman touchdown Chapman shaken up on a ball that looked like it might get intercepted but Chapman ripped it away from the defender 51 yards. All right, this is really nicely done here. You're going to see Chapman, who goes over the top. But watch the safety really bite on this over route. See the safety? He'll stay down, which allows Chapman over the top and one on one. Ball's a little late and underthrown, but Chapman does a great job going up and making the play. We talked about it at the beginning of the game. The biggest thing for Kellen Mond is he's got to hit those big plays down the field. If they're going to be successful, and this offense is going to hit its stride, it's got to be down the field. He's got to connect on those. He's done so several times today, and another beautiful throw there to Chapman, who goes up and makes an excellent play. Sophomore from Friends places with Georgia. Raiders trying to get to 3-0. They'll run it here on second and 10. Davis cuts back, but he's thrown down and fumbled the ball, and it's picked up by Leal. Buddy Johnson forced the fumble. Leal gives AM its first takeaway of the game. Texas AM will have it in Florida territory. 
the kind of plays you have to make to beat a top five team, and AM is doing that here in the second half. This is what Jimbo Fisher told us. He kept pointing out, we got to hit on the long pass plays. We've got to break tackles when we run the ball. We've got to create turnovers. We can't beat Florida if we don't do those things. They've done all of those things here in the fourth. They have. They made the play, too. I mean, it's a great job by Buddy Johnson. Man, you got to feel for Malik Davis. He's had such a nice game today. Get us. Here's a pitch to Spiller out in space. Hurdles a defender. Helmet goes flying. Close to a first down is the running back, Spiller. We'll see if they give it to him here to try to milk some clock. Yep, straight ahead inside the 35. Down to the 33. Approaching a minute to go. Third down and eight. Mon will throw, and it's caught over the middle for a first down and more inside the 20. Chase Lane gets the first down and more. And the Aggies in business here late at home against number four. Third down and kick it on fourth. They'll give it to Spiller. And he cuts it back inside the 15 and brought down inside the 10. So the clock will stop here to get rid of the chains on first and goal. This is also a spot, too. If you're Kellen Mond, talk to your guys. You don't. Size has been questioned. And he delivered one of the best performances of his career. I mean, bar none. So clutch, so efficient, so in control yep. to give his team a chance. Congratulations to that young man for giving them a chance. And now it's the short field goal away from a massive win for Jimbo Fisher in this Aggie program. That's why they did. First things first, 26 yard try for Seth Small. to win the game for Texas A&M. can take a breath. Jimbo Fisher has done it. Beat a top five team. And hands Florida its first loss of the season. First top five home win in 18 years for Texas A&M as a program. you got to learn to win these you got to learn to not play the scoreboard and play every play relentless competitor win your space the scoreboard takes care of itself and i can't say enough people doubt them and we ain't done we deserve some of it but we can we had a very good football team and a heck of a program you speak about doubt there was a moment where things were unraveling for your group with penalties and dumb mistakes how did they get it back together and finish so well did a good job weren't unraveling just having impatience you can't be impatient. You got to play this game, though. You can't cheat the game. The game makes you play it, and we played it today. Kellen Mond has taken his fair share of criticism. How do you describe that young man's I, performance? And I'm going to tell you, hey, he's had some mistakes. Every quarterback does. Let me tell you something. He's the reason we're winning football games, and there's a lot of these guys. It's been awesome, man. It's been awesome. Coach, your defense had to get some crucial stops against a very high-powered offense. How important was that for your defense? Critical. Listen, they been, they gave a lot of plays up, but they got that turnover when they had to. Coach said that's your game, baby. How hard was it to earn this moment a top five win for you today, Kellen? I've never seen you play better. Uh, it was big time. Uh, but, you know, we, we had our ups and downs this game, and 
but I just told everyone to keep their composure and uh, continue to fight. And the defense was, you know, able to come up with a big time stop uh, to give us the ball back. So, um, I mean, it's a full team win playing full four quarters. You were so accurate today. You made big throws, none bigger than to Chapman there in that fourth quarter. How were you so accurate today? It just goes back to practice and the way I train. And, um, you know, I'm very hard on myself in the way that I, I prepare myself. And, um, you know, my guys push me, my coaches push me, and um, we're able to come out and have a big win. Tell them how great was this win. Listen to the crowd and enjoy it as you walk off. Thank you. Thank you. Let's take a look at today's more driven moment brought to you by Goodyear. The takeaway by the Aggie defense, Buddy Johnson forcing the fumble. Malik Davis coughing it up here. Big hit by Johnson, the senior from Dallas. And then the short field goal after AM moved it down the field. And the Gatorade bath for Jimbo's first win against a top five team here at AM. What a performance by Kellen Mond, a guy making his 37th start, plays one of the best games of his career. College football scoreboard is coming up next, then it's Arkansas and Auburn. For Holly Rowe, Greg McElroy, our entire crew, I'm Dave Pash. So long from Texas A&M with the Aggies, takedown number four. <laughs> there ain't no feeling. It's like not knowing and laying your guts out and find out who you are as a person. There ain't nothing like it. That's why you play. That's every ounce. There's a lot in this game is hell. But that right there is worth every ounce of hell you go through. It's worth every ounce. There ain't a feeling like it. I feel like the world can't explain it. They can't do it. It's different. You're different because you play this game and how you play this game and what it takes to be successful in this game. Take special human beings in here, in here. And then what you're finding out, the love for each other. You find out you don't know somebody till you stand with somebody in adversity. What's he going to do when it happens? What are you going to do when it happens? And half the time I told you, you're scared. To, ain't nothing wrong with being scared. It's how you attack scared. Scared don't control you, you control it. Yeah. Yes, and you step up. Life, you're going to be scared in life a zillion times. And what bravery is being scared of going anyway, going head first right in the middle of it and coming out on top. That's what you did today. Hey, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, when you, get, when you want a seat at the big boy table, they don't give you one. Yeah, You've got to take, take somebody scared no matter what the adversity is and what the situation is. Now, here's my challenge to you. One tonight, you be smart. Two, this is only a 24-hour rule. This game don't mean nothing compared to what you do next week. It's one game. One game. We ain't one game one game. And then come back. We just got to make you hungry. You're gonna be a, you're gonna be a greyhound. You're gonna be a lion. You want to eat when you're hungry. You want to eat every day. You want to eat every day. And anything that gets in front of you and challenges you, you eat. You eat. There ain't no let up. Don't exist, man. It don't exist with champions and successful programs. You show them what you're capable of now. Are you ready to accept the responsibility? Are you ready to accept the responsibility? Yes, sir. Are you ready to accept the responsibility? Yes, sir. We now have an all-time leading passer. In Texas A&M. Yeah. 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 You can keep your composure because you trust everybody in this building. That's the reason. So, hey, let's enjoy this win. Let's come back to work next week. Brotherhood on three. One, two, three. Brotherhood. dimensional guy he can run he can catch he can block now at quarterback we're gonna see KJ Mississippi State trying to convert here on their opening drive pressure comes right away passes batted to the turf and KJ Costello is hurt Johnson now checks in at running back he works to the left of KJ Costello they'll fake it that way Costello going deep down the middle, and this one is picked off in the end zone by Miles Jones. Trying to take. Well, here it's first down to ten. We're still looking for our first points. Handoff. Spiller. 
Run out of bounds near the 40-yard line. Good to see him back on the field. Emerson pushes him out of bounds. Bread and butter play here for Texas a and You see every guy reaching, trying to get to that next formation. Block. Spiller behind his quarterback, Kellen Mond. Isaiah breaks the tackle inside the 30. Almost broke another one. He's to the 25. Here's Spiller, or Smith, excuse me, coming near side. He's inside the 10, down to the 5. That'll be a first down for AM. It'll be. The hand is to Spiller, just powers his way into the end zone. Just went right behind Dan Moore, and Spiller gets the three yard touchdown. A nice job again. The reach blocks get into the second level, and they're going to put it in the hands of KJ Costello to make a play. Costello flushed out of the pocket, and he is dragged down to the turf. Aaron Hansford with the sack, and it's fourth down. I missed a mistake. At a career high, 11 tackles against Vanderbilt, and their opener. And that one is blocked. The Aggies get to the punt and smother it just shy of the goal line. It'll be first and goal, Texas A&M. They'll line up in the I formation. Hand it off to Spiller, trying to get his nose across the goal line. Does that and a whole lot more. Touchdown, Aggies. Stello trying to get this offense clicking and that's going to take some first downs and that's not how you do it to Marvin Leal the athleticism of DeMarvin Leal is unbelievable this is a, a guy almost 290 pounds but can play inside can play outside they try to bring another guy you see him coming off his right edge of KJ here just look at the move up front the spin move the right Pick up this first down The blitz comes and down goes Costello. Brian Williams will get credit for the sack, the third one today for the Aggies. Yeah, Mike, El Mike Elko, the defensive coordinator, said we got to choose our times when to bring pressure. And they brought it, man. I see some of the big guys have had zero. Would not look good on me. <laughs> Just saying. Here's Spiller. Nice cutback. Out over the 30. That's a gain of 12 and a first down. Let's get an update, Matt. What's going from the 27th. Three-man rush again. And dropped again is K.J. Costello. The fourth sack of the first half. Jaden Peavy gets that one. Aggies will take the knee and get out of here in the first half. It was not the prettiest of first halves either way. Texas A&M had a block punt set him up first and goal for one of their touchdowns. Isaiah Spiller, though, was... Very good on the ground. 12 carries, 79 yards, and a couple of touchdowns. Is doing, but not happy with the penalties. They want to clean that up this half. First play to Isaiah Spiller off the left side. He'll pick up 14 yards and a first down. Spiller closing in on 100 yards. Bulldogs bring five. Aggies. Pick up that blitz and complete the pass to the tight end. Tied in. Well, he is a difference maker. Speaking of difference makers, here's another one. Isaiah Spiller with a first down and more. 19 true freshmen last year saw action. Many of those on the offensive side of the ball. Kellen Mond will sling it on second and 10. That pass is caught around the 45 by Chase Lane. And again, you know, this offensive... Top notch uh, athlete, so... He's going to continue to groom this program to be where he wants it to be. Bond dumps it off underneath. There's Lane again. A lot of room to run. It's a foot race to the end zone. Touchdown, Texas A&M. What a response here from Texas A&M and Kellen Mond being patient. Nothing really down the field, checking it down, and a simple five-yard shallow cross route turns into a big-time touchdown for Chase Lane. 
And this is exactly what this offense needed after the interception. And yeah, a lot of four and five stars litter <laughs> the <laughs> wide receiver core for Texas A&M. What a young freshman. KJ Costello, we have seen this song and dance over and over again. Loose football picked up by Jaden Peavy. <laughs> Buddy Johnson got there, put the pressure on the quarterback, and Costello just put it on the turf. And this is exactly what Don talked to Coach Leach about at halftime. We have to protect the quarterback better, but also KJ has to do a better job of holding on to this football as well. You get pressure, protect the football, and knocks that football out right there. And look at the big man, Jaden Peavy, rumble there. Look at two in the offensive line has played probably one of his best games today with the physicality matching Mississippi State. Take it to Spiller underneath to Smith. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Quick strike, capitalizing off the turnover. Not playing around with it. Does a good job of just getting that football out in space. A little misdirection. And watch a little eye candy. Everybody going left. And you bring a nice Smith back across the formation. And before you know it, he got some depth there. Trying to find a combination that'll work. And down goes Rodgers. Johnson and Clements up front converge for the sack. That's number five. Bringing an extra rusher on this one. They'll go away from it, though. And Marks makes the catch. Not a whole lot of room to run. And he is wrapped up around the 16-yard line. Antonio Johnson. 16, but that drive stalls at the 21. Tucker Day. Here goes Smith down to the 40-yard line. I think he's back to <laughs> Very far away, huh? Yeah. Nice little pitch. Got that away to Smith. Has a lot of room to run. First down inside the 30, down to around the 26-yard line. A little option game tripped up there by Martin Emerson. Yeah, I haven't seen much of this in the game, but putting a lot of pressure on that end forces him to commit, and nobody has pitch, man. Love the fact that the receivers are 12 down. catches. Here's Smith again, Anias twists and turns, picks up eight. They'll run it with Smith down to the one. Did he get in? They're going to say he's down at the one-yard line. It'll be first and goal, Aggies. Just look at the little creases he get there. Looks like, yeah, it looks like he's down right at the one. And it looks as though Mike Leach will suffer a third consecutive loss in an offense that is struggling, to say the least. Texas A&M, back-to-back wins. They win it 28-14. to Good win for the Aggies. They'll head back home. So for DJ Shockley, Dawn Davenport, the rest of the crew, I'm Dave Neal saying so long. Coming up next, it's boxing. Let's get you to Las Vegas and Joe Tessitore. We come out there offensively and we had big plays, got holds, got moved the ball, could have jumped on them all over the place. And we, we let those out. You can't do that on the road, guys. We got to learn from that, okay? Defensively, outstanding the whole game. Now, we come out there and they get a freak play on a ricochet for a touchdown. But I'll say this offense, then you immediately answered right back with a big drive and come right back and got control of the game. Then we got a turnover, then the defense gets a turnover, sets us up, we score, then we got we got to learn to put the game away. We got to learn to put the game away once we get down there and play a little better. You know what I'm saying? And do that. Now, here's the inspiring thing. We, but you still went on the road in the SEC and you got a road win, man. That's you. Right. Growing up to do, we got some execution to do. We got some guys. We are can be a really good football team, and we're gonna have to be. Cause I'm gonna tell you what, the rest of them on out, guys, is gonna be a bloodbath, man. It's gonna yeah. be a bloodbath. But I'm gonna tell you what, you're exactly right. Cause I'm gonna tell you what, we should be standing at the end. We got as good a team as anybody we're gonna play when we play. And it's how we play, and how we look at this off. It's off. We can't off. It's off. Week is the time to get better, 
take a deep look at ourselves, really evaluate what we're doing well and poorly, get that fixed, keep enhancing what we're doing well, and these practices this week has got to be all out, guys. Work, 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 work. I'm not interested in being average. I'm not interested in being average. Five out of three, get in here. Yes, sir. One, two, three. Bam. This is Kyle Field, home to the eighth-ranked Texas A&M Aggies, who will try to beat their longtime rivals, the Arkansas Razorbacks, for a ninth straight year. It's SEC Network football in prime time on Saturday night. Ellen Mond at quarterback, Lauren in shotgun formation as the Razorbacks won the toss, to, elected to defer, and it's Isaiah Spiller with a burst of speed leading the conference with over six yards. Did not convert the first time they had one. Mon with plenty of time to survey the field, and it is caught. That's a first down, and it's the first time Hezekiah Jones made a catch since 2018. Was injured before last season, and in track. Arkansas doesn't get a ton of pressure, but Bumper Poole was able to get inside of Isaiah Spiller. It didn't matter. Kellen Mond kept his eyes downfield. Out on the field tonight. Goes as a six-yard penalty, so the Aggies with a fresh set of downs at the 45. And it's a strike to Chase Lane, who's emerged as one of Mond's favorite targets. It's another first down. Saw has come out there on the field. Meanwhile, Spiller. This is the handoff to Anaya Smith, and Anaya gets near the goal line, just shy inside the one. Looks like a touchdown. These might both be touchdowns if this review, is overturned. The ruling is a touchdown. The runner was on the body of a defender, broke the plane to the goal line with the football. Please reset the game clock to 34 seconds. 34 seconds on the game clock, please. Nine for Franks. And Felipe is in trouble, and that ball is batted down, goes out of bounds. It'll be fourth down. You see the pressure there by that Aggie defense forcing the fourth down. That's Tyree Johnson. They have got their leg. You know, it's Felipe Franks. He hitches once. And the clock ran out. 48 yard try by the fifth year senior Duke transfer, A.J. Reed, and he pushes it to the right. Reed has been automatic inside 40, but from 48, he can't convert. <laughs> he is in love with calling a football game, that's for sure. Third and six. Mon has so much time and space, and he delivers a perfect ball to the big tight end, Weidermeyer. They had to blow a whistle for him to stop moving forward. He's showing pressure. Mon, it's a strike again to Weidermeyer. It's a first down. Arkansas walks up. They kind of mug the line of scrimmage with Joe Fouché. And Bumper Pool. Personal foul, face mask, number 13 defense. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. You see Bumper Pool up in the line of scrimmage that drops back into zone coverage. Weidermeyer just kind of settled in right behind the linebackers and in front of safety Joe Fouché. 11th play of the drive for number 11 to the end zone. Touchdown, Weidemeyer. Pressure in his face this time. The pocket collapses inside out. Bond gets hit as he throws.
Kellen looks like he wants to load up. Doesn't like what he sees. Under, so he takes off. Stays on his feet. First down. That's exactly what you were just talking about. A guy that has tremendous understanding yes, of where... But a pretty dangerous runner as well. One heck of a leader, too. And first and ten. Likes what he sees this time. And it's Weidermeyer again. Riding the Razorbacks all the way near the five. He's 265 pounds. How are you going to get him to the ground? You better bring a friend. There's Weidermeyer again. And it's sitting there right between. You got three deep effectively. Hudson Clark is carrying some hogs with him. Bring a friend. How about bring five and you still can't get him down? This is Spiller. And Isaiah gets a touchdown. There's your answer. And AM's done it twice now. Punch, counter punch. Isaiah Spiller again. Finding it on the back door. We saw Greg Brooks make a nice 49 yards. He missed from 48. Plenty of leg, but hooks this one. He pushed the first one and hooks the second one. And Arkansas comes up empty. Capitalize on those drives to be able to answer. Kellen has plenty of time to get this one to Lane. And soft coverage down the field yields a big play. Chase is inside the 25. So follow him over there to the field side. Singled up with Chase Lane again at the top of your screen. Spiller's back in, but he's covered up to the end zone. Weidemeyer's open. Touchdown. Some pretty good tight ends in this conference. Jalen Weidermeyer, Kyle Pitts. I don't know. I like Weidermeyer a lot too. You see, Kellen Mond takes a shot. See if Mond can move the chains on this third and seven. And yes, he can. Man, that was a bullet. The ball does come free at the end as Smith. Let's see if they say he was down. Down before the ball coming loose. First down. Receiving core becoming more and more dangerous for the Aggies. Spiller. Incredible ability to just weave his way through traffic there. As Bumper Pool makes another tackle. Setting up a block for the guys in front. First down run. How about the step? back and move back towards the middle of the field that Spiller made. Let's hope he's okay. I think he landed on the football at the end of that one. Well, maybe not. That foot in the ground. It always makes me nervous. It's a first and ten as A-Chain gets to get a few reps. And look at the freshman go! Touchdown! passes and another touchdown for the Aggies couple of broken tackles I count three in the open field CYA chain has really caught the attention of this Aggie roster forty two to seventeen Felipe looks around and collapses. Down goes Franks with the pocket is Bobby Brown. All 6'4", 325 pounds gets the sack. You see two twists. There's nowhere to go with the football and ends up tripping. On his tight end, looks like it was Kern over there. We had him in the Auburn game a couple weeks ago, obviously. 
uh, tonight and really just it's been nice getting to know him as a coach and as a person and I'll tell you what he exudes a lot of patience every time I've interviewed him he just he's very calm about things he, he has former offensive line coach who's now your head coach and it's blown up immediately that's Devin Morris the junior from Caldwell Texas it's a turnover on downs donut burger the South Carolina State middle. Fair I'll never forget that that was not intentional that was completely incidental no one tries to impale themselves Helen Mond tonight 21 of 26 260 yards passing three touchdowns ran it for 32 more yards and as the most total yards in Aggie history by a quarterback as they improved to four and one on the season We talked about it coming into this game, where Kellen Mond stood from a record book standpoint. But it's his performance. The guy's want, he's wanting to win games. He's a quarterback of a team that, as we talked about it, they've got a chance to wiggle their way into the college football playoff. In a strange year, they have that opportunity. As you see both quarterbacks embracing there towards the end. Felipe Franks played like a warrior. But Kellen Mond put together a pristine performance here tonight versus the Razorbacks. Kellen Mond, can you hear me okay now? Oh, yes, he can hear me. We'll crank that down just a little bit. Kellen, first and foremost, you guys come out with a big performance, a very balanced attack on offense. How would you evaluate your performance tonight on the offensive side of the football? Um, I thought we played really well, and I think we're um, really balanced both in the pass game and uh, in the run game, and I think we're big thing we were able to convert on third downs and you know keep the chains moving so that was something that we knew going into the bye weekend this week uh, playing Arkansas and we were able to execute. So your name now etched in the record books you have now eclipsed the 10,000 yard mark on total offense for a quarterback what does that mean to you Kellen? Um, it's special um, you know, I just think about all the days um, just putting in a lot of work with you know so many great leaders and you know Christian Kirk and uh, Travion Williams and then now just look at my growth and um, you know, I couldn't thank my teammates and coaches enough. Coming off the bye week, you showed some improvements out here tonight. What can you take with you in the back half of the season? Uh, just being more consistent, um, trusting my eyes and trusting my uh, receivers to make plays. Um, we were able to get Hezekiah Jones back tonight, and you know he had a big time game. And um, you know I only look for us to continue to get better both in the pass and run game. Twenty-seven thousand fans here tonight. Twelfth man showed up. Yeah. What does that mean to you? Uh, I mean that's who we come out here and play for. Um, I mean, they've been so spectacular this year, especially with, you know, all the rules and regulations going on. And um, they definitely helped us and, you know, got some big wins here. Thanks so much, Kellen. Thank you. What a terrific representative of college football Kellen Mon is. For Matt Stinchcomb and Lauren Sisler, I'm Taylor Zarzer. Our final score. Come on, man, let's go. First of all. Yeah, Did we lose or win? We won, oh, man. Well, damn, what the hell? Let's go, fun? man. Turn up, man. Those things are hard. I don't, I don't care how you get them. Those things are hard to get. I don't care how you get them. Those things are hard to get. Proud of you. You knew that was going to be a battle. That game is always a battle. And I was proud of you. When they, when they were hitting you early, you come right back and answered up every time. Then we took control of the game. Then we pounded and took control of it. The only thing we did not do is what? We didn't finish the game like we needed to. We didn't run out the clock in four minutes, offensively and defensively. We were up 42-17. We can't give them any life. We got to take the hope out. Get those stops. But we'll work on those things and go. <clears throat> but proud of them. Now, you played your hearts out, played tough, physical, knew it. One other thing we had. We had nine penalties for 100 yards, guys. Can't have nine penalties now. We have nine penalties for 100 yards. Self-inflicted wounds. That's the only thing stop us on offense. When you guys do things right, we handle business. We got to make sure we're doing it right. But proud of you. Here's the other thing. We're going to have two. We had a away game now. Big trip. And take care of our bodies. This week is a different week. We do not have anything on Tuesday. Tuesday is a completely dead day because that's voting day. All right, make sure you vote. Take advantage of your right to vote. It's going to be a hard week, guys. They've had an off week. So they've got an advantage on you. But you got a lot to play for, man. You're playing your tails off. No matter what they put in front of us, how we prepare, what the circumstances is, we overcome. That's what lions do. They eat. We immediately got to get on South Carolina. It's a different week, guys. 
It's going to be challenging. I don't want to hear no excuses. I don't care what they say, how much of it. We play ball, we take care of our own, okay? Our pride takes play with pride. You got what I'm saying? We take care of our own business. I'm very proud of you guys. You overcame, played a great game. Big rivalry game. It's nine in a row on Arkansas. Played your tails off. Had a big win. Tremendously proud of you guys. Tremendously proud of you, all right? Family on three. One, two, three. Bam. to ESPN College Football presented by PlayStation 5. Columbia, South Carolina, the backdrop, Texas A&M number seven against the hometown Gamecocks. The seventh meeting all time between these two squads with a lot on the line, respectively. Lane in motion, gets into the slot. And Mond hands it off, a lot of room there for Spiller who runs over or bumps into the official, picking up a first down pick and he and McCormu Two of the top ones in the country. Mond over the middle into traffic. Weidemeyer with a pickup of 13 yards and a first down. And coverage. Lane in motion. He looks the other way. Mond into the end zone. Touchdown, Aggies. There he is, Anaya Smith. Mr. Versatility for the Aggies. And they strike first. Football. Smith in motion again on second and eight. The toss into the boundary. Nowhere to go that time as PB heads off Harris. And it's going to be third and long. It's an 18 actually last week against Arkansas. Second down and 10. They're going to run it into the boundary. This is Spiller getting his giddy up on. Spiller sheds a couple of tackles and out to midfield. Pickens finally brought him down. Second down and six. Ellen Mond over the middle, open, caught. And down to the 24-yard line, Chase Lane with the first down. Let's go back to that last play. Third and short. What a play fake. Vaughn has a man wide open. Weidermeyer, room service, Aggie style. Touchdown, Texas A&M. And this is what sets up the play-action pass. Methodical, you run, you run, you run. And he's going to block. And then just sneak out the backside. Nobody accounts for him. You see, he does such a good job selling it with the block. Just sneaks out. Kellen Mond waits for him to come open. Hemorrhaging. Feels like a crucial drive here for South Carolina. Great point, Dusty. Hill back to pass. Little pump fake, double move out and up, and he's going to be picked off back at the 45-yard line by Carper. So the Aggies with the first turnover of the ball game. Well, they thought that with these aggressive safeties, there'd be some opportunities for over five minutes to go in the first half. They have not been able to move the ball well at all, and that is a typical example. A loss of two as we go back to Matt Barry. Field. Hill under duress and sacked. Back at the 30-yard line by Hansford. Well, Hansford times up these blitzes so well. Going back, if you watch the Mississippi State tape, he is really good timing up these blitzes. No one accounts for him in an easy gimme sack. Seven of 11 on the year. This from 45. And he pushed it off to the left. With 3.05 to go. Another opportunity. Yeah. Hear what you're saying because your actions speak loud. And the players. Backed it up with action, and here's a little action by Spiller. Oh, he hit him with the sauce in the secondary. Spiller on the move, and finally brought down from behind by John Dixon. A touchdown saving tackle all the way down at the 10 yard line, and Spiller again getting up slowly after that incredible 52 yard run. Smith up top in the slot. They can get to the three. Mons on the play fake, open, touchdown, Weidemeyer, and that ties a school record. Do your little dance, Jalen Weidemeyer. And into the record books is Kellen Mond. Tying the most touchdown passes in Texas A&M history. The way he's playing. 10 of 19, three touchdown tosses. Hancock going to run this one out. Tyree Johnson, the first one to make the tackle on Fenway, getting his first half. Nothing easy for the South Carolina offense in the first half. As great as the Aggie offense has been, the defense being dominated on both sides by the Aggies. 
Mon back to pass, hits his back out of the backfield. Spiller on the run, broke through one tackle all the way inside the 40 to the 38, and uh, he's holding his right leg. As what we saw last year at College Station. A-Chain still in the backfield. Spiller getting a breather after being shaken up. And A-Chain can't be brought down. What an unremitting, unrelenting run by Devon A-Chain. This is a zone to the left. Everything gets washed. Watch him. He even kind of misses it. But then he hesitates, cuts it back, and a massive gaping hole for A-Chain to run through. Great push up front by this Aggie offensive line. First and 10 from the 15. Little option to the wide side of the field. Mon with a great ball fake. Oh, he hit him with the okie doke sauce. Touchdown, Mon. Well, this is an outstanding job by Kellen Mon, putting the safety, Jalen Foster, in a terrible situation. I mean, it's extremely well done. Foster, right here, look at him. He's in a terrible spot. He gets too far outside, cuts it up, and an easy walk-in touchdown for Kellen Mon. He waited, he waited, he waited. Happening right at the line of scrimmage. And nothing doing on this play either. They're going to lose about three yards. Harris brought down by Peavy. This AM defensive line just changing the line of scrimmage. It's been Tyree Johnson, Jaden Peavy, Bobby Brown, all three there. The game top quarterback, Brian Tannehill, who still checks in with him. And Hill going to be swarmed and swallowed at the 33 yard line. You need this first down to try to get back in this ballgame. Smith in motion. Hill looking to get rid of it. Ball tipped up and intercepted by O'Neal. Still on his feet. Leon O'Neal runs it back near midfield. And the second turnover of the ball game for Texas A&M. And first and 10 from the 48. Bond over the middle. Lays it in there. Caught. And another easy walk-in touchdown for Texas A&M. A chain off the chain. I see what you did there. Thank you. <laughs> Ellen Ma oh. has been off the chain, and that touchdown pass puts him alone at number one in the history of Texas A&M quarterbacks. What a night for Kellen Ma. And really, it's going to be Ernest Jones who doesn't get quality depth. Two high safeties. Jones has got to continue to get depth. He does it perfectly placed over the linebacker's head. No advantage either way, but still close friends and good coach. Hey, chain great move to pick up the first down. Boy, you can tell he's got a lot of shake in his game. Cam Smith finally pushed him out of bounds. In the red zone as well, Jones. And get a first down without scoring a touchdown. A chain brought down at about the three. A chain again. Touchdown, AM. Touchdown, Texas AM. A chain. Devon A chain with another Texas AM touchdown. To make sure that he got across the front of the goal line. A chain refusing to go down that knees down, but where's the football? Tough to tell from this. Angle. The AM went over Florida. That's about as good as it gets. And again, with the way this team is playing, another tackle for loss for this AM defense. The way this team is playing, I mean, you have to think if they can continue to handle their business, as you referenced, a very manageable schedule down the stretch, they're going to be very, very much in the college football playoff conversation. it off as we go back to the studio and this guy checks a lot of boxes athletically nobody just volunteers for the 400 meters that's it's a man's that's race. a crazy race that's about being able to withstand punishment as Ernest Crownover runs the ball close to the first down I want to stop it's 
you know, establishing the culture, but it's also bringing in really good players into this culture. Pass complete down the field to Max Wright. And Max Wright is going to slide into the end zone for a touchdown. Max Wright with the Texas A&M touchdown. Well, there's Haynes King. As you heard Quint talk about, the athleticism was the number three dual threat quarterback by our ESPN analysts. On the move, nice throw out in the flats. And Max Wright makes one guy miss and oh, yeah, strolls yeah. into the end zone for yet another Aggie touchdown. Yeah, Cam Smith missed that tackle in the secondary and number 42 ran for 42 yards into the end zone and they tack on one more to make it 47. If they can run the table and be undefeated, they will have a decent resume. But I'll just say this. I know it's not just about eye test. This is the best football team I've laid eyes on this year. The way they're playing right now, the way they can win the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football, it's, it's extremely impressive what Jimbo Fisher has going right now in year number three. Long way to go before yeah. it's a finished product. But man, if they continue on this trajectory, they're going to have a strong case to be in that college football playoff. The ceiling is pretty high. What a night. Great balance offensively. 264 yards rushing, 266 passing, a total of 530. And down in College Station, they're loving what they saw on the field here tonight. Kellen Mond reauthoring and rewriting the record book for Texas A&M tonight. 16 to 26, four touchdown passes. And Nia Smith. Getting that work in as well. Weidemeyer was on the good end of a touchdown catch as well. The brain trusted midfield for Dusty, Quinn, Rogers Redding. I'm Mark Jones. It's a great night in Columbia, South Carolina. It's a great night in America, folks, as we send it to Las Vegas for UFC Fight Night. <laughs> understanding how important practice is how important preparation is film study taking care of getting your reps on the field scout team giving us good looks everything offense defense special team also taking care of your bodies this is a hard late night tonight what happens we got to get sleep tonight and tomorrow to make sure we got it going into the week to have the preparation because we got another long road trip to go into to play at Tennessee you understand what I'm saying but it's another rough tough opponent keep taking them one at a time right there defense let me tell you something one hell of a job. Man. Yeah. You talk about, hey, they challenged you not being able to run the football at front, guys. You guys were outstanding. Secondary, you were good. They had us a couple times early. They didn't capitalize. We took advantage of you young guys. You guys were doing a hell of a job back there. Man, we tackled well. Look, we had, we had Damani out. We had Mike out. We got a lot of good players on this team. There's opportunities for other guys, man. You got to be proud of yourself. Up. That's Guys, just you're learning to play and situational football, physical football, skilled football, technical football. I guess what? Tomorrow is zero zero. You gotta start all over. You gotta start all over and you can't get bored and you gotta lay the groundwork. That's being good and being a great team is consistency and performance over a long period of time and not taking anything for granted. Hey, what's up with that dude I know? What's up with that dude I know? But I would tell you, it starts up front on the offense, defensive lines, guys. You guys are making each other better in practice. You're learning how to practice, and we're controlling those lines. Tight ends, backs, receivers. God, hey, I'm going to tell you something else tonight. Hey, they remember November, guys. They remember November. November matters. And you got to take care of your body, schoolwork, everything, even more, because it's at the end. you got to make up and be ready, okay? Hey, get your break. Yes, sir. Hey, wait to stay together. Bring it in, bring it in. Hey, bring it in. Family on me, family on three, one, two, three.
Davis Price, did he get there? It doesn't appear so. It looks like the Aggies get a stop on downs. The officials will make sure Davis Price to get the stop on downs. Let's see. It is a stop for Texas A&M. As they were able to, and that's all that you can ask out of your head coach for your players. A keeper for Mott. He's got a crease. Kellen Mott to the 40-yard line of LSU. Flag thrown. From 42. He's got it. The Aggies strike first. It's 3-0, Texas A&M. And be there. Have to figure out a way to get by LSU first. Mon, second and six. Wide open. It's Smith. Such versatility. Take Anaya Smith, move him all over the field, and they find him for a first down here. Constantino will try and angle one. Does it perfectly. Down to the one-yard line. Well, that certainly makes the decision to punt and not go for it on fourth down and five stand up for me. You Absolutely. think they're in? Yeah. No doubt about it. But if they don't get one, if they don't get both of those or one of those two. Spiller in the secondary. Isaiah Spiller looking for the pylon with a stiff arm. Is he in? Touchdown. for the sophomore, Isaiah Spiller. And he stretches the AM lead. Makes a big one happen here. Now watch, he's gonna arc release these guys out front. They're gonna pull and lead block, which is great. But watch the center, McCullum. Freeze it. McCullum is gonna get his piece right here and then peel back for Ojolari to spring Spiller right there. You block out, you get those pullers. McCullum gets two for one, and that gives Spiller the space in the open field. That's outstanding by that offensive line. You know, when I asked you this week what makes this offensive line so good, you said they are good front side, but they're great taking on the number five team in America. And it's quarterback run again. And he is met again by a tackle machine. And Buddy Johnson, who has led this defense in tackles five of their six games this year. In these last four games for his Aggies. to the 36-yard line of LSU before Flock finally throws him down. Watch Anaya Smith from the left side of your screen pop. He clips the safety. A great block by Weidermeyer and then Isaiah Spiller showing that vision. Yard gain, now third and two. On on the run. That's a first down to Anaya Smith. Stays in bounds. We'll talk about strength. Shakes off a tackler and picks up an extra six or seven yards. Federal quarterback, so there's only so many times you're not going to side with pass interference. Mont over the middle. There's Watermeyer muscling his way to the five-yard line. Eli Ricks, the freshman, made the stop. Is it good enough for a first down? It looks like it is. In a loud environment. Pressure off the edge. Finley tipped ball on the count. Is it intercepted? Jalen Jones. Did he get his arms underneath it? Intended for Eric Gilbert. And it is ruled a pick. One play after the touchdown pass is taken away from LSU. It's a run pass option. Finley gets pressure off his left. He's thinking one thing. Gilbert's thinking another thing. Ball's behind. Tips. Equal interceptions in the SEC. Aggies ball. The board. Find your matchup, TJ Finley. Or quarterback run against a three-man defensive line. And DeMarvin Leal says, I am unblockable tonight. He has been tough. Watch Bobby Brown, five. He splits it. And then Leal falls back underneath. You mentioned it, Bob, that three-man front. That can't happen. That can't happen. Back to play uncomfortably. Line drive kick from Cade York's no good.
pressure now. Let's see. AM looks like they might be checking out. There is a late safety blitz. And Finley's hit by the blitzer. Perfectly executed by Texas AM. Marshall picks up a loose ball, but that was clearly an incomplete pass. They'll run it instead with Spiller. That's worked. He's got a first down. Statistically for either team, Isaiah, obviously not that many fans. It's a lot easier to hear a fake signal. And this time, Seth Small puts it right down the middle. And Texas A&M ends the first half with three more. They've got a 13-0 lead when we head to the second half. LSU will start the second half with the football. Another blitz. Wobbly throw, and it's intercepted by Buddy Johnson. He's at the goal line, and he's in. The pick six for Texas A&M. side and then they're gonna drop Tyree Johnson now watch TJ Finley he thinks the back's gonna be uncovered nope Tyree Johnson freeze it drops out underneath there so now he's gonna come to number two and here's Buddy Johnson hanging out in the middle field playing with vision on the quarterback you get pressure that ball floats a little bit pick that's a great job by everyone on this Aggie defense you blitz off one side you drop off the other side look it Finley wants the back it's not there Hansford with great effort and Buddy Johnson I called him an offensive skill player before Playing with vision and space, great hands and the ability to finish. It's an this pressure. Get it, get the ball out and, and see if you can beat, it, get, beat the blitz with the pressure, a screen. Duck under on the rush by Tyree Johnson. And down goes Max Johnson inside the five-yard line. Andre White all over him. This, this, this looks like, like Dwight Freeney or something. Like, watch Tyree Johnson here and look at the pen. Just watch the pen on Deculus right here. Watch it. Whoop. I mean, that's big time. And then the spin around and White sticking that left arm up. Watch, stick the left arm Number up. Zero you take away 19, kind of that throwing lane, and you continue to change. And putting numbers over him. They're allocating people to try and take him away. Another sack. Just a four-man rush, and Bobby Brown got home. There was nothing exotic about this. Just watch five in the middle of your screen. Push, push, push. And then Max Johnson really runs right into him. But that's just that scrimmage more. And I don't think the you can make that. The onside kick is secured by AM, so they can go to victory formation with 38 seconds to go. I don't think you can make that choice without watching the game tape. We don't do it. And then the great thing for Jimbo Fisher and Texas A&M is you finally get back on the field in front of your home crowd after you got ranked five and you still win 20 to seven. And there is a kajillion, I don't wanna say, there's a lot of corrections that they yep. can make offensively. And it's great to be able to do it after a win, right? So they gotta fix some things on offense and they gotta figure out some stuff, but their defense was absolutely spectacular. And they still have three more games to shake the rust off offensively, get that train back on the tracks before the college football playoff rankings that actually matter are the end-all yeah. be-all come and, back and the great thing for Jimbo and A&M is they still have the offensive line they still got Isaiah Spiller they've still got Kellen Mond who's got a ton of experience right so again corrections to be made but they have the people with the capability to do it 20 to 7 is your final Texas A&M over LSU so Jimbo Fisher's team shakes off the rusts to a certain extent certainly on defense they did and win by a couple of touchdowns. Chris Budden and Dan Orlovsky. I'm Bob Wachusen. Next on ES. All right, listen now. First of all, congratulations. One, there, there, here's the thing. You learn how to win. Okay, how you win? You got to learn how to win. That's an art to that, guys. Don't ever be, don't ever be down about that. I know we may not play as well in certain, in certain areas, certain things, but you can't be down about learning how to win. And you can't be selfish and not celebrating this win right. as a team. It's not about you. It's about our team. That's right. And you got to look at yourself if you didn't play well and figure out why and we move on. That's part of it. But as a team, you guys are going to be a team. No matter what happens, everything is one. There's got to be a oneness to each other. You got to understand that. That's what you got to understand. 
and what you do and how you do it. All right? So congratulations on that. It's a hell of a win. Get in here. He's not tonight, y'all. He's not. Hey, hey, be, be real smart. <laughs> Family on three. One, two, three. Bam. Stadium, a big SEC battle today as Auburn host number five, Texas A&M, riding a five-game winning streak, their longest since they joined the SEC. Fisher says he's having by far. His best season. They start with the run fake and the toss. And it's Anaya Smith who does a little bit of everything for the Aggies, and they pick up 14 on the first play of the game. Ball in tight space. Meyer, former basketball player. Here's the toss to Isaiah Spiller, leading rusher in the SEC. And they're moving very briskly on these first three plays. They're to the Auburn 41. Spiller's a guy that knows. Left guard Kenyon Green is a sophomore. The rest of them are seniors. Nice cut by Isaiah Spiller. And he's inside the 15. Only going to look for on third down is that tight end, Jalen Weidemeyer. Big body. Three wide receivers out there as well. Short set by Mont. Corner to the end zone. And it is Weidemeyer for a touchdown. Beautiful route on the corner route. He moved the defender inside. You can see his pass receiving skills. Take a look at the end of this. Make sure he got one foot in. There's the catch. Left foot in. Yep. And what a little just shining light in their life with beautiful Kalen Grace, Kalani Grace. Big hole and a big game. It's Devon H through the middle and out to the lineman. And their ability to sustain blocks and work well together, very impressive. Opening another big hole for A-Chain, and he can really fly. And if Jamie and Sherwood didn't get him down, he would have flown to the end zone. He's inside the 25, first and 10, Aggie. See, now here's what I want you to see. Watch the left tackle, Dan Moore and Kenny Green. Double team, then get to the next level. Pick up the middle linebacker, and that opens up the hole. Here comes Kellen Mond and the Aggies starting from the 25. And here they go again. They've been moving the ball at will, it seems, but still just the seven points. Smoke Monday made the stop. And then using the clock, they have plenty of time. They don't want to leave Auburn time. And this possession's over. A chain, moving the chains. First down inside the 30. Weidemeyer was the lead blocker. He's the guy that's going to get the block on Papau. Number zero, there's the block. Smoke Monday with a missed tackle from his free safety position. Minute and a half to go. Mind a strike. Anaya Smith fell down as he tried to cut her. He might start using its timeouts here. Time is not a problem for AM. Isaiah Spiller, powerful, refusing to give up. The Maroon Goons giving him a shove to help him along and finally stopped at the one yard line. And down here, uh, close. Mon keeps this time, and it's a touchdown. Uh, last week, Kellen Mon made a, a mistake you don't see a veteran guy make. He stuck the ball out on a quarterback sneak on a third and one play. That time he protected the ball, did not go at the half. 14 to 10 Auburn, 174 rushing yards in the first half, the most for a &M in three years under Jim Fisher. Nice win. Good decision to keep it by Bond. He's across midfield, scampers out of bounds at the Auburn. 48-yard line. We're down to 218 to go in the third quarter. Just a straight little lead option. You're going to option the end man. And he gets Christian Tut kind of in that bind. Tut takes one step towards the pitch man. He's to Bond's left. And they run to the right. Bond aging. Boy, every time they've given it to him today, something good has happened. Taken down by Jalen Simpson. It's another A&M first down. Situation where maybe they could use their regular kicker set small. Mond felt pressure from behind on target. 
And a diving catch made for a first down by Chase Lane at the 20 yard line. Booth is not stopping the action. So on we go. On down the seam. Deflected and caught for a touchdown. Weidermeyer has it after it looked like it was going to be intercepted by a disconsolate Zacoby McClain. On looking for his favorite target. Doesn't get the ball quite high enough. McClain gets both hands on it. But why am I there to catch the deflection? And McClain did everything right. He read the quarterback's eyes. 45-yard punt. AM with the ball and a lead. And a tough run by Isaiah Spiller. He gets 11 and a first down. Here's Matt Batman called a culture-changing victory. They haven't lost since that game. Weidermeyer, another first down. He's across the 45. 39 for the year, leading all SEC tight ends. Option. Mon keeps it. Good idea. First down, 41-yard line of Auburn. Play clock at two. Second and 11. They do throw a deep ball to an open man. Carr! Smith inside the five-yard line. from the slot you've got a lot of field to work with a little stutter step that throws Official just Christian Tutt and player. Kellen Mond found Anias see much eye formation from Texas A&M Spiller leading the way Anias Smith has the touchdown <laughs> Isaiah Spiller becomes fullback on that play I'm sure he's not used to doing that easy either, but watch the left side of the line and the lead block by Isaiah Spiller. And Anaya Smith just falls in. Almost midway through the fourth quarter now. Nick's under the rest. There's also a flag down where you expect a holding call. He was chased out of bounds with a loss of a couple. See if they can create some separation. Nix checks it down. Shivers gets rocked and cannot bounce away. Miles Jones there for a and m And this is going to be two straight three and outs at the worst possible time. Official for timeout for an injured player. They might blitz. They don't do it much. And they rush just four. Mond steps up, has some running room. Has the first down. Big play by Mond, who with that run makes history. He goes over 1,500 career rushing yards. Just a great decision. The kind of decision you expect from a guy who has played and started and won as many games as Kellen Mond. Here are the numbers for Tebow in Florida. And for Dak at Mississippi State. And now Kellen Mond, who's really number one in almost every category for quarterbacks at Texas A&M. Six out of nine, the Aggies today on third down. This is third and four. Again, just a four-man rush. And Mond is on target again. Anaya Smith, first down with a couple of yards to spare. To keep his team right where they want to be at the number five ranking. And keep it on the ground. Spiller, first down and much more to the 25-yard line. And a little not so much running game. Texas A&M. I've been very, very impressed, not just today, but watching them on film coming into this ball game of, of how well they played. And again, when you get to this point in the year, Sean, and your offensive line, the same five guys start every game and they're healthy, that is a huge advantage. 33-yard attempt. And it is just barely good. Looked like it was heading directly into the right upright in the last minute. Lean left and got through. And AM is about to end this three game losing streak head to head with Auburn. <laughs> There's a noticeable difference in the kind of atmosphere around the team since that win. There's a belief they could do something really big. Well, this is the longest win streak they've had since Jimbo's been there. The recruiting has been good. They're, uh, they're in a great position. Solid looking football team. 
Need to keep doing their part, likely with two regular season games left, and then hope that they get that help. But it's quite possible that they'll get the help. Thirty-one twenty is the final. A and M finishes the game with five hundred and ten yards of total offense. Mond eighteen out of twenty-three for one ninety-six and two touchdowns. He also ran for one. His 20th rushing touchdown of his career. Joining Johnny Mantell, Joel Hunt, Bucky Richardson as the only AM quarterbacks who have ever scored 20 rushing touchdowns. Bo Nix 15 for 23 for 144. Some memorable runs. He had his first career two rushing touchdown game. Rushed for 49 yards and all out of those for Auburn. Here's Allison Williams. close for much of the game. What enabled your guys to pull away and get this road? I just think we're growing up as a team and understanding how to play. The momentum swings don't bother us as much anymore. We're learning to play the next play, do what you control, what you control, and answer and drive. Had a big, we were 17 to four when they were ahead and we got to stop for field goal. Then we could go get the drive, then we got another drive, then we got another drive, and got first downs at eight o'clock. Critical plays in the game. Our guys are growing up and knowing how to play those plays. What impressed you the most about your offense and what you guys were able to do in the run the, game? The consistency. The diversion of runs we had, the consistency and the different things we did, the packages, and how hard our guys run our offensive line did a heck of a job, and we blocked well up front. What will your message be to this team about the focus and mentality they need to close out the season and position themselves for the playoff? Get ready to play Ole Miss next week. This lasts for 24 hours in the morning. We get ready to play one game at a time. Thank you, Jimbo. Thank you. He deserves a lot of credit. He's a terrific game manager, play caller, puts his players in position to best utilize their skills. Big win for AM. Very much alive in the college football playoff picture. 31-20, the final score for the two Todd's and Allison Sean sending you for Great win, me my boy Moose. He's 71, right? We on the rise, baby. We on the rise. Guys. That's the way you're supposed to celebrate it after taking with the lot. Yeah. 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 Right yeah. right. Enjoy all these wins, man. Enjoy all these wins. First of all, I'm going to say something else. An eight game schedule. That's the first AM team to ever win seven games in the SEC on this. Yeah. Yeah. Feels good to be first. You did the first to do something, okay? But I'm going to tell you what, that game right there, we knew this was going to be a dog fight. I told you coming over, this is a tough place to play. They play tough. They challenged us every way, shape, and form they did. Offensively, defensively, special teams, we knew they were coming here. Here's what I'm proud of. There's a hell of a football team in here, guys. Yeah. And what I'm saying, you're learning not to let things, the momentum swings. You're learning to control what you can control, doing your job. And when they respond, you respond. They respond, you respond. And you're matching. You're, you're learning competitive nature that is understanding at a championship level. You understand what I'm saying? That's how you got to respond to things. You don't back down. You just accept the challenge and you go higher. You had crumbs. You stayed hungry. You did things. Uh, defense did a really good job. I thought they early did a good job, and they got a couple drives on us. We got to get some things sewn up, and they ran the ball on us, which is uncharacteristic. And they got us the second half. We lost contain. They got up. We didn't get a drive. They come down. I'm going to tell you the critical point. We got that stop, and it was 17-14 to make it 20-14. to That game didn't get much of two scores. And offense, what would you do? You matched them, went right down there and scored and went 21-20. And defense, you got off the field. Offense, you went right back down and made it 28-20. And then you got off the field on defense. And on offense, you went right back down at 8 o'clock. And then we're set that. Hey, Seth. Seth, where you at, buddy? Hey. 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 Early in that game, after point it didn't hit good. Always have faith in your son. Yeah. 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 But you know what? I knew two scores is more important than wins the game, and I, I count on you every damn time, son. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, offensive line ran the ball for 313 yards. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, 
McKellen, 18 of 23. Two, 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 three. Third down, okay, a nice. That four, that third down catch. About making plays on third down. Yeah. 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 And run the ball with Spiller. Where's yeah. Spiller at? Yeah. He's going to run for 120 yards this game. And he's going unselfishly. Listen, go. He's a star runner. Be unselfish. Go to fullback and lay this. So they had to keep nickel people on the field, and we could eat the clock and run. That's what it's doing. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever your role is, guys, it ain't about how much you play, how many yards you get, how many catches, tackles. It's what your whatever your role is, accept it and grow with. That's what championship teams do, guys. That's what winning teams do. All right, family on three. One, two, three. Bam. Bam. College football presented by Geico. Here on Rocky Top, they've never played a regular season SEC game. This late in the calendar, but it's 2020, and it is Tennessee against number five, Texas A&M. There goes the Swiss Army knife, Anaya Smith in motion. Mond looking his way. Instead, a long throw to the sideline, and that is perfect to Hezekiah Jones. That's a gain of 14 more and another Texas A&M first half. That game impacts how things go, and that committee meets tomorrow. Mond gets outside. With a stiff arm in the red zone and more. That's good for another Texas A&M first down. It looks like he got it right down to the line to gain. Eighth play of the drive. Another throw for Ma. There's a wheel route to Spiller. That's a first down inside the five-yard line. Down to the four. It is first and goal. Alante, second and goal. It's Weidermeyer in motion. Ma. He might take it himself. He'll try to get to the goal line, and he'll break the play. Texas A&M with the response, and Kellen Mond's got a touchdown. See if Mond got in, look at the toughness, the physicality. He fights for that end zone and stretches it across the plane, capping off an outstanding response in this A&M. I promise, just a great story. Bailey on third down. Pumps once. That ball comes out sideways, and it is scooped up, it looks like, by Darnell Wright, the right tackle. Will they rule that a fumble, or was that an incomplete pass? I think a win today for Texas A&M, and you need to look good doing it. Third down and six. Here comes a blitz. Ma swings to a wide-open spiller. A blown coverage for the Vols, and the composure of Kellen Mond eventually recognized it, and Isaiah Spiller... That's a big first down game. That's exactly right. Watch the pressure come off the edge. What I like is he doesn't blink. He doesn't blink. He holds it long as he possibly can. There's nobody there with Isaiah Spiller. They're in man-to-man -man coverage, and he just... Here comes the blitz. It gets picked up. Mon throws. Very close to the end zone to Weidermeyer. He's out of bounds. It's first and goal inside the five at the four-yard line. Ten. Spiller. At the goal line, reaches the ball out, and he's in for the A&M touchdown. And Texas A&M takes the lead. Bailey off play action. Gets hit, and the ball pops out. That's ruled a fumble. There's a scramble for it, and it looks like it's Aggies football. It is. Andre White gets the recovery. To Marvin Leal, all over Harrison Bailey, and it's a takeaway for the Aggies. Uh, to Marvin Leal, one of the more talented defensive linemen in all the SEC, his play is really starting to skyrocket. Watch him right here off the edge. He's just going to work here and continue to get going. Works down as he sees the puller comes across, gets outside of him, works through him, and a big hit on Harrison Bailey as he tries to get rid of the football. And that's one thing is you've watched Harrison Bailey on tape rally up and tackle and get off the field. Short range field goal, Seth Small. And he puts it through. So Texas A&M gets three, but that's a win for the Tennessee defense. That's a huge penalty. Costly. Costly. Mott. Deep shot down the sideline. He drops it in. Hezekiah Jones holds on. Gets blown up by McCullough and still it is a completion to the 28-yard line. Cover two and a bullet pass. Fits it in just before the safety come over the top. McCullough with a big... The Aggies with a timeout. Mont.
touchdown. Wide open Anaya Smith. He didn't miss him that time. There is a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense. Number 97. That 15 yard field will be set on the kickoff. He's going to play the touchdown. So this time, Kellen Mond finds Anaya Smith for a score. We talked about his route running ability. Watch this option route as he shakes like he's going to work inside. Stops on a dime, works out, and it completely shakes off the corner. Warren Burrell wide. 24-13, Jimbo Fisher's team in a must-win spot. They lead third down and 16. They set up the, the screen, but that was diagnosed immediately by that AM defensive front. Ty Chandler made the catch. He had nowhere to go. There in College Station. Third down and two. Here comes a blitz. Mont. Bullets one over the middle to Chase Lane, who gets free. Lane with a stiff arm. Thrown down all the way inside the 40 at the Tennessee 36. You called it out. It was a blitz. How about the protection, the pocket? We talk so much about this offensive line. Look at the poise. Look at this right here. He's got all day to survey the field, locate Chase Lane over the middle, and then Chase Lane refusing to go down quality yards after the catch. But it all starts with the protection after the Tennessee blitz, allowing Kellen Mond to stand tall in that pocket. Jumping in the neutral zone was Tyree Johnson. He got away with it. And Shroud bullets one over the middle, bobbled ball. It's incomplete. It was in the hands of Josh Palmer, and he couldn't hold on. That looked like a terrific throw from J.T. Shroud. It was on the move. He steps up as the pass rush gets around him, locates Palmer, and the sure-handed senior receiver. False start just a couple of plays before, and he's got to catch that right at the sticks. A big first down. He can't bring it in. It's going to happen between now and when those final rankings are revealed. Spiller on a cutback after the injury timeout. He's got nine more yards. It's kind of aligning, setting up perfectly for these Aggies. Kellen Mond off play action. Floats one up the seam. Weidermeyer. It's a 50-50 ball. And as usual, Jalen Weidermeyer wins the battle. All the way down to the 25-yard line. Well, this is the matchup they want to get. Weidermeyer on a linebacker, Corvarius Couch. And this is a mismatch. Crouch. Gets beat by the head fake inside. Watermeyer goes up. Really? Play action for Kellen Mond again. In the right flat. He's got Ryan Rennick. Rennick fights for extra real estate. There shouldn't be a bias, but I think in some ways there definitely is. Here's Anaya Smith inside the five, down close to the goal line. It is first and goal inside the one. Selfless to help this offense. He'll block for Anaya Smith, and Anaya Smith will score again. Touchdown, AM. And they extend their lead. Bailey extending the play. Trying to get away, and he cannot. Now he will be thrown down by Bobby Brown. Bailey there just holding on to the football too long. Plagued him early on the game, but to answer your question. As Harrison Bailey drops the throw, and again, sees the rush coming, and tries to take off. Picks up a yard on third down and long, so it will be fourth down. And I thought he handled all that with class and dignity. Here's Anaya Smith. Using speed, breaking tackle, slides down inbounds. As it's, we check in with Quinn. It's how you play. North Carolina is probably the next best team behind the top two, and that's. There's not a lot there. What a move by Anaya Smith with the stiff arm. Anaya Smith down inside the 10 yard line before he's run out. First and goal at the nine. It's a nice hole off the left side and an outstanding piece of running. As you see, get behind 65, Dan Moore gets a kick out block, and Anaya Smith in the open field is dangerous. 44 minutes time of possession 44 to 14 and after the timeout rather than try and tack on the touchdown and go for those style points he's gonna send Seth small out for a chip shot field goal and make it 34 13 with a minute 16 to go 
Stroud rolls to the sideline. He'll heave one into the end zone. And it looks like that will be intercepted by Brian George. A little vengeance there for Brian George. Remember, as the game started today, this is the guy who had to start in place of Miles Jones, who wasn't available. And especially in the first half, they went at Brian George and went at Brian George, and they're able to get the better of him. And I would say a bit of vindication here late in this ball game. Streak as the number five team in the college football playoff rankings. Will they, will they still be number five when the final rankings come out tomorrow? Who knows? But it's a 34-13 win in the season finale for Texas A&M. We still have a lot of football left to be played, as we've talked about. That's going to probably ultimately determine how true of an opportunity Texas A&M has to get into that top four. But they did their job here today, Bob. They did what they needed to do. A decisive victory in dominant fashion. And I said from the very beginning of this game, they need to put an exclamation point on this season and show this committee who and what Texas A&M football is. And by my estimation, they've done that here today. Yeah, we started the day saying that they needed to win today and look good doing it. I think Jimbo Fisher's team won today and looked pretty good doing it. So they will end the season at 8-1, having won seven games in a row. Let's head down to quit. Coach, what was most responsible for, for today's win? All, all season, the all season, the things we did when everybody else was going crazy. I mean, all the skeptics, our guys stayed together, played hard, and our tough, our toughness, our toughness <laughs> and competitiveness. Why do you think Texas A&M is deserving of a top four playoff finish? Let me tell you why. We play in the best league in ball. We got beat by the number one team in the country, who also had another superstar on the team when they played us named Waddle. People ain't even playing with him now. No team in SEC history has never lost not one game and been in it. The other leagues, I love them all. If we can't play in this league and be in the playoff, something's wrong. Ohio State is leading 16 to 10 in the fourth quarter. Listen, you're going to be watching the scoreboard tonight, I'm Coach? I'm sure we will. But everybody, listen, the, the, the people on the, on the committees will do their job, but this team is very deserving, I'm going to tell you that. The, you passed the eye test today if you really know football. You do. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. He's been holding that in for a while, Bob. No Shusen. question. Yeah, we spoke with Jimbo yesterday. We asked him similar questions ahead of this game. Now the floodgates are open. Now he obviously feels he is deserving, and this team is deserving to say exactly what he just said. They made their case, and we will see how the rest of the day plays out and how the committee votes on it tomorrow. So for Dusty Dvorak and Quinn Kesnick, Rogers Redding as well. I'm Bob Wachusen saying so long from Knoxville, where A&M wins going away. Matt Berry and company standing by. Hey guys, that's how you finish. That's how you finish right there and you put your roof on somebody. You guys, I'm gonna tell you something. How far we've came from what went on when the pandemic hit and all the things that are going on, the things you've overcame, the mental strain, not just the physical part, man, the mental strains with your families and all the things that are going on and everybody else, the distractions. You all stayed together. So the maturity, the leadership on this team was tremendous. You young guys, body into what you're doing and everybody. This this is as good as I've been around, man. I'm going to tell you, I've been in this business a long time. A team that can play together, love together, be together. you got something special going on in here. You changed the culture. The culture is now changing. Things are here. You belong in the damn playoff. You belong up there with the best in the country. We're as good as anybody in the damn hear my mouth because you know you can hear it I, like i said i want to let our play take care of itself we'll talk it in but they, 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 they can't take anything away from you. you won seven games in a row in the sec you won seven games in a row in the SEC. coming back and doing what you're doing i'm just so proud of you guys you're one hell of a football team one orange bowl tonight Hi again, everyone. Bob Wachusen here with Dan Orlovsky. Katie I feel like they should have been one of those four teams that played yesterday. All right, so here's your opportunity. 
the, the Capital One Orange Bowl to, to prove that your case was legit. You've got the makings of a playoff team, dominant defense, quarterback that's been there and done that. Now on third down and 17, it's just a three-man rush. Uh, floats with it, it's going to be intercepted. Andre White into the red zone for Texas A&M. There is a flag. They clock under five. Here comes a blitz off the edge. Vaughn throws behind it. Spiller calls it in. He's dropped by Asante. Spiller breaks a tackle. He's at the five. He's at the goal line. In for the touchdown. Johnson got him down. A big play here after the timeout. Third down and goal. Swing pass in the right flat. And get cut down at the 11-yard line as Josh Downs. Jalen Jones. That's true freshman on true. I'm so excited to watch the coaching chess match and the talent chess match in that game. Uh, long throw to the sideline. Wide open Anaya Smith. Breaking tackles to the 43 of North Carolina before he's brought down by Morrison. There's the Swiss Army knife making an impact for the first time tonight. 25 yards away for Seth Small. He puts it through. Four point lead again. You are watching the capital. Section. Eugene Asante is a blitzer. He comes up the middle. Mon floats it over the middle. And it is a contested catch for Chase Lane. What a throw by Kellen Mon with the blitz coming. And pressure right in his face. Watch the right guard, Jared Hawker here. Watch him peel back, okay? You're gonna get the blitz. You're gonna get the blitz off the left edge and watch Hawker. Set, now peel back left. Boom. Get Asante coming through and give him, Kelly Mond, the chance to get that ball downfield. Option pitch. Spiller cuts it back. First down and more. Down to the 26 yard line. Damon Fox made the stop. That's called for the goal of that play. Mon up the seam, has a cut. Jones inside the five. First and goal, Texas a &M. He's all the way down to the three-yard line. You've got plenty of time. You're patient. You're patient at the line of scrimmage. They'll give it a spin. And he'll run into the end zone with a Texas A&M touchdown. Second rushing touchdown of the night for Isaiah Spiller. 17-13, A&M with the lead. Capital One Orange Bowl. Trying to communicate with Sam Howell with the play clock winding down. Here comes a blitz. Sam Howell out of the pocket. He's going to try and run for it with a step on dodge for the line to gain. And it looks like they'll mark him out a couple of yards shot. Buddy Johnson tracked him to the sideline something that I should get to. What do I do with the football now when I change this play? They swing it out to Anaya Smith. With a cut back to midfield. He is dangerous when he gets it in the open field and they find so many different ways to get it to him. Sees that nickel back tucked in. Anaya Smith, this is an easy throw. The extension of the run game. Ball out to the perimeter. I can play first and 10 ball. I can't play first and 20 if I'm unexplosive, inexplosive as an offense. Well, you can if you get it to a chain in the open field. That's got the penalty yardage back and then some. Swing pass to Anaya Smith. He's got speed as well into the red zone. That's a big play with an extra. The flag thrown. It looks like a face masking call might go against Kyler McMichael to end the third quarter. Chip shot for Seth Small. We are tied early in the fourth quarter at the Capital One Orange Bowl. Gotta take your shot down, 
On with all day to throw. Wide open, Anaya Smith. He drops it in. Anaya Smith with a cutback. Still on his feet. Down to the six yard line. It's a goal to go for the Aggies. This is a beautiful job of play action. This is taking your shot. Watch the offensive line secure. Kellerman, now watch. Pop. That Anaya Smith route right from that right side of that screen. Sell on that crosser. And then snap it back outside. Conley just no match and then the decision. Third down and goal. And across the board. I'm looking for number zero. Mond out of the pocket. He'll tuck it under. And he'll get to the pot line. And Texas A&M is a point after away from a tie. Kate great and then find a one-on-one. -on -one. It's another blitz coming. As Newsom on the wide receiver screen. He's bottled up. He's thrown down. And it's going to be a three and out for North Carolina. Andre White made the stop. Powell pumps once under pressure. Now he's going down. McKinley Jackson. Jeremiah Martin. They were both there all over Sam Howe. And this. Here comes a blitz. They'll swing it out to H.A. Speed to the sideline. Very close to a first down. He's got it. About the regular season. H.A. Walker's out in front. Kept his balance. Gets down. Dan, we have been talking all night about opportunity for the players on the North Carolina side with opt-outs and young players getting a chance to play. How about a true freshman running back in the absence of mm. Isaiah Spiller gets his opportunity. And boy, what did he just do with it? I love the, the contact balance, the speed, but it doesn't happen by himself. Okay, Weidermeyer is going to come around and seal on Asante. That's the first part of this play. This is a great job by this tight end. Awesome block. Now look at Anaya Smith blocking downfield. This is going to be great by A-Chain, the contact balance. Watch zero. You don't think this game matters to him right there? Blocking downfield to give him the ability to hit that home run. Really good job of Weidermeyer wrapping around, making that block. Anaya Smith blocking downfield. He's done everything tonight. And then you see the absolute home run speed by A-Chain. And there's an assistant coach that recognizes how important that block was. There's many pats on the back over on that AM sideline for the blocks yep. as they are for the touchdown. That was a game that we certainly lost to side. They've got a lot of close losses. And here's Brooks, third down and short. He doesn't get there. Three minutes to go. It'll be fourth down and two. And now the decision for Mac Brown to go for it or to punt and use your timeouts. Pinches, right? It's fourth down and about a yard and a half. I mean, the only way you're going for this is if in your preparation there's a call that you absolutely love in fourth and two situations. Is it read? Quarterback run. Newsome in motion. Spinning. Very close. Did Henderson get there? It looks like he's short. He will be marked down short. Texas A&M is about to take over on downs with 2.24 to go. The center, Anderson. Watch him scrape face. Get bounced off. And that forces Henderson to have 
and kind of change his path. Finished by AM's defense. He's well short of the line to gain. They're going to run the chains out, but this is a formality. And where they put the football down, he's a yard short. This was not very close. And Texas A&M has the football with 2.24 to go. A chain bounces it outside. Gets to the sideline. And that should be good for a first down. Who on the clock, Kellen Mond knows that. A chain. Another crease. Breaking tackles. Cameron Kelly is hurt. He saved the touchdown, but it's first and goal, Texas A&M at the one. The line has kind of just taken over. Watch the left side. Pass off. That's a great job again by Anaya Smith coming down on that safety. It's incredible effort by Cameron Kelly to sell out and make this tackle. Well, you talk about one of the best offensive lines in college football, kind of taking this game. for the touchdown. So it's a two touchdown lead for Texas A&M now with a minute and a half to go. The leadership of Kellen Mond shows up with some clutch plays the last two drives and then that run game that offensive line a changes look at the push by the right side the strain and then again don't dance north and south find that hole puts his head down watch puts his head down and just goes i'm going three man rush how he will be sacked tyree johnson throws him down and that forces North Carolina to use timeout number two. So needing two touchdowns with only one timeout left. Now extending the play. Somehow stays on his feet. Tyree Johnson couldn't bring him down at first. Now he gets another opportunity along with Andre White. And it's another Texas A&M sack. This week. And the natural question, Katie George talked to him about it as well. How is your team going to respond? Mm -hmm. You were bitterly disappointed to be left just on the outside looking in mm -hmm. in that five spot. And he didn't have any concern that his team wasn't going to come out and be ready to play tonight. And they certainly answered that call as they are champions of the Capital One Orange Bowl. I love that shot of Kelly Mond. Look at Jim <laughs> trying to stay away. He's going to stay dry. Well, speed. He did. He turned on, got an extra gear to make sure he didn't end up under the Gatorade bath. <laughs> trying to be respectful to Mac. That's good. Well, these are two coaches that have a genuine affection for each other. You can tell when they talk to each other and about each other, they are both on each other's favorite list. I'd say my favorite list. I mean, look at this embrace, man. This is good stuff. This is th this is what that coach, mentor, look at the emotion that they're both sharing. Remember, Jimbo comes there, and Kellen's a highly recruited guy, takes him on this journey, the work that's been put together. You know, Kellen Mond has accepted an invitation to go to the Senior Bowl. But there is an extra year of eligibility next year for any player that wants it. He didn't totally close the door on the idea that he might come back. Imagine if this group all came back and ran it back again. It'd be a problem. They would be a big problem. 41-27 <laughs> is your final. Texas A&M wins the Capital One Orange Bowl. Stay tuned. The trophy ceremony here at the Capital One Orange Bowl is coming up. And right now, it's time for Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. We'll be back with more coverage soon. SVP. Bob, thank your you. final. Texas A&M over North Carolina. And Katie George is down there to do the honors. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. I'd like to welcome you to the 2020 Capital One 
Orange Bowl trophy presentation and a big congratulations to Texas A&M. We'd also like to thank the fans for traveling from College Station, Chapel Hill, and elsewhere, making this an incredible atmosphere at Hard Rock Stadium for what was an unbelievable finish. I'll now turn it over to the Orange Bowl Committee Chair and President, Jeff E. Rubin. Thank you, Katie. Congratulations! On behalf of the Orange Bowl Committee, I want to thank you, and I want to congratulate both teams for a tremendous year and for an amazing season during some very, very tough times. I also want to thank our conference partners, the ACC and the SEC. I also want to thank Capital One for being our title sponsor of tonight's game. And with that, I would like to present the 87th Capital One Orange Bowl Trophy to Texas A&M Aggies and Coach Jimbo Fisher. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to say one thing. I say congratulations to North Carolina. North Carolina had one heck of a team, man. That, that was one of the great Orange Bowls of all time. That, that game right there was one heck of a football game. He's got a great team. But I also say there's a heck of a football team standing right here in front of me, too. I'm a heck of a football team right here in front of me. All right, we, we came a long way, achieved a lot of things, had some disappointments, had some things. But I'm going to tell you what, this team kept fighting just like in this game. I, uh, I can't be happy. I'm so happy for our fans. The 12th man is as good as it gets, guys. I'm telling you that right now. I, they're lucky. They're lucky we all couldn't come. They're lucky we all couldn't come. But, you know, hey, there's some great things for what this team's accomplished, this senior class. I want to say son, I thank you to this senior class, what it's achieved, what it's done, what it's came through, and, and, and really persevered and laid a groundwork for the future of this organization. But I'm going to tell you this, we ain't done yet. Jimbo. I have to ask, when's the last time you ran that fast to avoid a Gatorade shower? I'll tell you what, and I pulled my hamstrings. I'm, I'm, somebody in there is going to pay for that. I have never, I ran that fast in 25 years. Jimbo, you alluded to it earlier. A couple of weeks ago, your team felt it deserved to be in the top four. Yep. In no way, shape, or form did they hang their heads or did they pout. How gratifying is it to win the Capital One Orange Bowl? I'm going to say this right now. There's a group of players right here that love each other. And I'm going to tell you, they were very disappointed. But we had a meeting about an hour after the selection. Committee. And we walked in, we said, we don't care. We're going to play the best Orange Bowl we can possibly play. We're going to lay the groundwork. And they, their whole mindset went in one hour. I know it hurt them inside, but it tells about the character of this team. And for nobody to take a step out, nobody thought about opting out of the game. They all played because they all wanted to love, trust, and believe in each other. They had a responsibility to each other. There was something proud right there. That's Aggie pride right there. Isaiah Spiller has meant wow. a great deal to your football program, and of course we hope that his ankle is okay. What did you think of the performance of Devon A. Chain, the man standing right next to you in tonight's game? I'm tell you, I might have to keep this guy around a little bit. I'm going to tell you something now. What he did tonight, the runs, but he's done it all year. He got banged in the beginning of the year, and then he got, had great runs in the middle of the year, and then he got banged up, and he came back tonight. And that, that performance tonight, I mean, he, that, that run, I don't know how far it was, 70, 80 yards. Bouncing, banging. That's what big time players do. He's going to have an unbelievable future. I'm so happy and so proud of him, that's for sure. Thank you, Jimbo. Congratulations, Jeff. Thank you. I'll turn it back to you. Well, Devon, congratulations. On behalf of Capital One and the Orange Bowl Committee, we'd like to present you with the MVP award of the 87th Capital One Orange Bowl. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Devon, congratulations on being named the 2020 Capital One Orange Bowl MVP trophy winner. Can you describe what it feels like to A, be standing up on the stage and to have all of your teammates cheering MVP? Uh, it feels amazing, you know. Uh, I just want to say I love all y'all boys, you know, especially my seniors. You know, I'm going to miss my old line. You know, I see y'all back there. Uh, I just say uh, this was a great win for us. You know, we've been through a lot. So, you know, I just can't wait for next season to get back to the ground. What do you think it's been like for you and you've learned from playing alongside Isaiah Spiller as well as Anaya Smith? Uh, I learned a lot from both of those guys. You know, uh, when Isaiah was hurt today, I told him that I got his back. So, you know, he needed me today. And, you know, he was pushing me. He was on the sideline. He was happier than, more happy than I was. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask about your quarterback. 
What has Kellen Mond meant to this Texas A&M program? Uh, he, he meant a lot. You know, I, 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 you can ask him, but I think love him. I love him. You know, I wish he could stay another year, you know, but I love him to this. Congratulations and enjoy. Uh, thank you. Thank you guys so much. That concludes the 2020 Capital One Orange Bowl presentation. Congratulations, Aggies. Enjoy. A well-earned celebration for Texas A&M. That was Katie George. For Dan Orlovsky, Tom Bob Wachusen. Hopefully you enjoyed Capital One Orange Bowl. We certainly enjoyed bringing it to you. Time to go back to Sports Center. It's got fantastic. Talent only takes you so far. Talent, when you get to that elite level, when you play in these games, you play in these big situations, talent's only taking you so far. Then it gets down to guts, it gets down to toughness, and it gets down to your how, how competitive are you and how much pride you got in yourself. It took what? Four quarters, three quarters, and three quarters of another quarter. But you never flinched. You never broke, you never moved, you just kept playing. That is one hell of a win, guys. I mean, one hell of a win. I'm so proud. What's up, y'all? Now you understand why we practice like we practice, we think like we think, we do the things in the offseason like we do. It pays off. And listen, like I told them guys out there, listen, this is a great year. You seniors, the guys that elect not to come back, or you guys, we'll talk about that later, and the guys that this is your last game, thank you so much for what you've done. Thank you. Thank you.